Hi, everyone. We are going to continue with the program. It's my pleasure to introduce Professor Jin Shu Wan. Wan decided a PhD in computer science from the Nottingham Trent University in 1998 and has been a full professor since 1994. He is professor of cognitive system, brain science, software science, and intelligent mathematics. Professor Wan is the founding president of International Institute of Cognitive Informatics and Cognitive Computing. His basic research has spanned across contemporary scientific disciplines of intelligent mathematics, knowledge, robotics, computer, information, brain, cognition, software, data, system, cybernetic, neurology, and linguistic. So, Professor Wan, you will have between 45 and 50 minutes to present your talk. And after that, we will proceed with a question and answer session. Okay. Uh, all right. Uh, first, I'd like to thank Professor Rammer's uh, uh, great organization of this series of uh, conference. And also thank you for your colleagues for for the organization. And uh, so for this talk, uh, I'd like to talk about the relationship between AI and NI. NI here stands for natural intelligence. We say brain in, uh, inspired systems actually is based on understanding about uh, the nature intelligence that's underpinning our methodologies and the technologies for implementing AI and uh, autonomous systems. So you say now we are touching something very, very fundamental in this field of work because we are dealing with the, you know, the fundamental level of intelligence science, the basic understandings about uh, human intelligence, about uh, the theoretic foundations of intelligence generation and uh, implementation by machines that maps to the work in AI areas. And uh, so this is the structure of my talk. So I'd uh, like to discuss uh, in, uh, in session two, I'd like to discuss uh, the current understandings about AI, particularly what can AI do? So we see AI had implemented a number of good things, but the theoretical foundation of AI actually is quite weak. And there are so many fundamental things that current AI technology can do. So that's our opportunity to, to dig up, to seek foundations and the basic series towards intelligent science and uh, generic AI series. So based on that, so that leads to the brain inspired systems, we call it, uh, uh, the, uh, use the term, we call it autonomous AI, so AI. So AWI actually says how the understanding about the brain, in brain science and uh, intelligence science would help us to understand uh, the future direction of AI and uh, how would we implement more powerful AI systems. So this is the rational in this talk. So first look at the, uh, the human intelligence. So human intelligence developed, you say, in, a, uh, in, uh, in uh, that's over uh, several hundred, uh, several hundred million years actually. And we are, Actually, all the develop, development we may summarize them as the development of human collective collective intelligence. So, you in know, in the very beginning, we, okay, in the very beginning, and actually the development of human intelligence actually is triggered by the emergence of languages among humans. This is uh, yeah, about 500, uh, 500 uh, million years ago. We have simple language, simple expressions, and then that lead 
to the current standards. So it is, uh, you, you know, in intelligence science, uh, many people believe the human uh, human intelligence was triggered by two making by collaboration and by many other factors. Actually, the language was one of the major things because that enable people to think in an ab abstract way and that enable people to do symbolic based reasoning. So all these things lead to another special language. This is different kind of mathematics that give us the power to reasoning in a symbolic abstract way. This is the beginning of our abstract intelligence uh, lead to the development to the industrial revolutions in England for, uh, you know, for enable people working together for precise and mice production. And uh, that enabled the organizational technologies we call, nowadays we call it engineering. And uh, also something I would mention is very important. I believe it's a car driving, it's a human driving. And you see all the other part is abstract intelligence. But uh, drive, uh, driving is a very special uh, technology uh, part of our intelligence called real-time behavioral intelligence. It is, uh, it is a counterpart of the abstract part. And this is so important because uh, this, this part of intelligence need us to handle the decision, handle decision making and external events at a level of milliseconds. This is unprecedented in human revolution, uh, evolution because this is something require you have a very fast uh, re reaction by the brain. So the brain is triggered uh, in the very beginning by language, but now a major part actually is by the real time decision making and reaction. And uh, this is uh, also that, uh, let me think, I, I would believe in a field, we are developing self-driving cars nowadays. I would think that's anti-development you know, anti of human intelligence, because once you sit, sit in a car and without any man maneuver, actually you lose the chance to develop the brain. The brain will get now that sharp because the, you do nothing there once you get a self-driving car. So I'm worried actually our next generation or next few generations will be affected by this. That means uh, very important factors to trigger our intelligence as a whole would, uh, would, uh, would uh, dismiss. And so then that's not helpful for human. Just like uh, we stop to, to talk, we stop to, to use in language or mathematics, that will reduce our power of intelligence. So that you say that lead to the, uh, the another level of uh, revolution we, from the industrial revolution is uh, information revolution. So that's a trigger the computer science, the internet, the knowledge bases. All these help us to process uh, intelligence, knowledge that lead us to more to the next phase. This is the current phase of intelligent revolution we are we're in. And that folks to the, that lead to the understanding of the brain, develop brain inspired systems, autonomous systems, cognitive systems, robots, and a symbolic intelligence. That's a human and machines, a symbiotic human and machine intelligence. This is the future we incorporate machines into our decision making. So that will be more powerful, uh, symbiotic human machine societies in the future. We are working actually uh, interactively and coherently with machine in the future. Or we are going to use machines to argument human intelligence. And you see this is all the trees lead, lead us here. So that's why we, we say this year's of conference actually address a very important uh, uh, issue and a very fundamental problems and that will lead a very important uh, development in the future. Yeah, and uh, so first uh, let's lo uh, look at the basic ideas about what is intelligence, what is intelligence science. We say intelligence generated by these small areas of the brain 
and uh, this is a uh, this is so important uh, because uh, that's help us understand what is intelligence. So here we say the theoretical part of intelligence we call alpha i, not a. It is uh, stand for abstract intelligence. We say the definition of uh, abstract intelligence. Actually, it's, uh, in a narrow, a narrow sense, is it is a function. It's a behavior function that transforms information into knowledge, into behaviors. So anything may trigger the generation of intelligent behaviors. It is a kind of abstract intelligence. Whatever is the means you would uh, implement it, could be by machine, by animals, by human or by any other mathematical system. That's the same, uh, we call the abstract intelligence. But uh, broadly, there is another kind of intelligence in this uh, in, uh, framework, it's called uh, the knowledge generation intelligence. That means transfer knowledge, this kind of intelligence transfers information into knowledge. So, the, so put them together in parallel, we would say, okay, abstract intelligence actually covers uh, anything, any magnets, if that system may transfer information into behavior knowledge, we believe that's a kind of intelligence, whatever is the means of implementation. And so that's a lead to our larger picture, the whole picture say we live in a natural world. But what is our position? Actually, we are in a center here to say we live in a parallel world. We have a physical world, that's the real world. We have, but we have a, another world, it is an abstract world in a, in, built in our brain. This world is much, much greater than the real world because we can cross the, uh, cross the universe within a second or a millisecond because we have a very large model, abstract model to model what we understand. <coughs> about the uh, world. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> you say we model the real world using two major uh, metaphors. One is matter, one is energy. But we only have one metaphor to model the actual world. It's information or symbolic things. Yeah, but the driving power is uh, alpha i, is our intelligence that uh, transfer the things in between. Einstein had already told us the real world the transmission between energy and matter in both ways, but actually there, there are existing the ways we abstract the real world things into our abstract world. And I use the, uh, the, the, the light is not solid, uh, uh, means the mathematical models have not, have not uh, yet uh, fully developed. But here with Einstein had already told us how to do, how to do the trans transmission. So this is the whole picture that uh, lead our human brains to the real world. So this is actually the essence of uh, abstract intelligence. Another perspective is about uh, the uh, layers of human intelligence or intelligence systems power in different levels. We say the bottom level where we share with animals and simple machines is reflexive intelligence. And the top level is the fully powered cognitive intelligence. So in between there are imperative, that's uh, something like a programmed or pre-stored uh, intelligence. This is a human after training or machine after training, they, they behave like this. And then we have adaptive intelligence. But somehow in the last 60 years, intelligence science, computer science, information science, we actually, we were bounded here, have no development or progress because, uh, because our machines at this moment may only do something it is relatively flexible and adaptive, but they are not autonomous. So our, you see our ultimate aim in AI and intelligent science is to enable the machines to generate their own intelligence. Yeah, rather than we provide the machines uh, by code or by trained situation at this level and uh, trained skills or 
uh, or by using a neural network or by programming, uh, programming powers to enable something at adaptive level. Actually, we, this cap should be broken. We should reach here in the near future. We are doing this in intelligence science and all the cognitive systems and brain species. Actually, we are, we are trying to break this cap, this bottleneck. So this is the whole ideas of the levels of intelligence and our current situation. We stay here too, or too long. We were stay here too long, you know, for more than six years. Now we are trying to reach this level. Once we reach top level, it is just like the power of human brain. So that's uh, the fully imp implementation of machine intelligence towards human level brain is very intelligent. So that's a lead to the need to study about the brain because without understanding the brain, that's the best and the powerful intelligent uh, implementations in a nature way. If we don't understand this, we really can't stand or can't predict what is the directions to improve the current AI technologies. So study about the brain may be divided into two parts. One is understanding the structure of the brain. The other, is, uh, other part is understanding the functions of the brain. The functions are built onto, on, on the structures. So you see the brain actually, although it is so complicated and we as human had studied ourselves for so many, you know, several hundred years in, this, in brain science and neuroscience, but we still have no very clear uh, picture about how the brain works. So this is a relatively recent uh, studies in my life. And we say, although the brain is uh, complicated, actually, uh, the structures may be divided into different kind of memory structures. So I would say that actually this is our long-term memory. This is our short-term memory. And here is our visual memory. And here is IO, that's action memory, behavior memory. So we call the abstract, uh, abstract behavior memories in this part. And, uh, and the short-term memory is in the front here and in the kernel, inside, which is long-term memory. And uh, this part is uh, our, our visual memory. That's, uh, that's a part of our long-term memory, but uh, there are short-term short memories for vision, vision uh, information as well. And uh, something was amazing in brain science, actually is this area. This, is, this area is uh, so important that it's called uh, uh, actually, this is our conscious memory, conscious status memory. Well, our consciousness or our modeling about the real world situation actually stood here. It's not stood here, partially stood here, but the major map of our understanding about the real world situation is stood here because here we have the whole set of memories, a whole set of sensories about all our the body of our brain, of our eyes, all the parts is modeled here. So here is just, I, oh, it is a temporary situation. Uh, here is the current status. And by compare those two parts, we actually understand what is changing, what is happening. What is the event we can capture here and that represent in this area. This is the important part. It was not very well studied. So nowadays, we, we, really, uh, we, we really understand that this part is more important than other parts because that's, all those parts is only for memory or for information storage and holding. But these parts actually represent what is the essence world for self, for people. And look at the functional side. The functional side is built on the, uh, on the structure side, but so the function is different from structures. So you'll see human intelligence, actually, this is in one of the paper in attribute transactions, we see there are seven layers of human functions. So the bottom four layers is called the unconscious or subconscious functions. So from the bottom is sensory, memory, 
perception and action. So this is the bottom level basic functions. But uh, assuming beyond the animals, we develop the higher three layers. So from the meta cognitive functions to meta inference functions to the higher level cognitive functions. So this is our reasoning part. This is our fundamental part linked to the external world. And so the higher three layers we call the conscious level functions. For in a word, analog to the understanding in computer science, we would say this part is something I call it a human operating system, HOS, human operating system. This is the fundamental layer of human body or human brain's power. But this part is our apps, the human apps. So all the things as an individual behavior or you learn something or you're doing something, that is uh, implemented by these three la layers. Anything beyond it is, is your everyday life, everyday behavior. So this is, so you say eventually the function of human brain based on this kind of neural structures becomes a kind of human computing system with a human operating system and a side of pre-trained or experienced behaviors. And you use this part to deal with external situations all the time. So this is your this is a whole picture about brain science and the relations with computer science. So this is what we call the brain inspired systems based on that uh, fundamental structures. So this is my experience. I was um, visiting a number of these uh, top ten university universities. Actually, that helped me. Uh, give me a chance to interact with all the pioneer scientists in this, uh, at these universities. I learned a lot. That led me to develop uh, some of the series that cross boundaries, cross disciplines, that help us understand what is it, what is uh, natural intelligence, what is the potential solutions towards the future of development in our field. So, so then before we discuss any further about detailed series, we need to understand what is the constraints of current AI technologies and series. So, so that means now we, the constraints is false. So what can the AI do for us? Yeah, just by understanding that, we know what is the constraints of our current series and current technologies. And we will understand more about the future development, well, what is the future directions we, we may reach, what we are going to do. So then you say, in this part, we are going to discuss the first is uh, human intelligence. Actually, intelligence is uh, not a built, uh, intelligence not directly generated immediately in the neural, on, on the neural structures. There you say the cognitive entities in our brain have four layers. So the bottom is data, then information knowledge, two intelligence. And also the understanding is we can cross this, you see, we can jump, say, we got some data, we are going to generate some intelligence. There is no way to do this. And we have to do it layer by layer. The data will be transferred into information and then transferred into knowledge. Knowledge will help us to generate uh, wisdom, we call it intelligence. And if human can do this directly from data to intelligence, and if we believe a machine can do it, but neural network, we can say if people, people assume, if you collect enough data and you can ge generate a better intelligence, sometimes you believe that could be advanced than human or so. Uh, actually, we would say there is no such way. For example, this is a fundamental challenge to train our neural networks to understand the big data. Say we have our end gate. The end gate, so say if you have a have our end gate that there are 10,000 pins. So then you say at the data level, what is the space there? It is too big. It is two to the power of 10,000 bits. What well, this means, this means if you hear all the people in the world working on this and counting on this, you need a million, millions of years to finish it. So you say, if you work on the 
on a function, it is diverse. The output is diverse. Uh, you never op work on, on the output side, output side of it. Otherwise, it is so large and uh, that's meaningless. But you have to get back to the input light. So this is why we say we can reduce this kind of problem that's so big and so complicated. But we can reduce it into information. Eventually we say, okay, the fate of information is on the 10,000. It's much, much smaller. We reduce it immediately to a smaller size. And as I weigh what is the things on the knowledge level, we say we immediately reduce the 10,000 base to two basic rules. What is the rules? So that means if all the input is one, we got one as output. Otherwise, we got zero. And you see, this is human power. We gradually and first reduce a very big, almost infinite space to some things inductively, inductively as rules. And eventually when we reach the top level intelligence, we say this is a problem actually is have no relation with the number of pins, how many pins there, because for any given pin, the output is just the function, we call it n, the function, related to n, whatever is n, if n is greater than two or greater than one, so this human power, you see, we reduce so large, almost infinity of space to the intelligence level or aggregate from low level to the higher level. We got, we, the machine learning results is, okay, that's only our end function. Even with, uh, with no relation to how many, how many pins there, whatever is number of pins, we have the same function. So this is human power, but, <laughs> But how you train the machines to understand this? Never, you can't. Because if you train the machines from, uh, from, from the first, you know, uh, first combination is two to the power of zero and then to one and then to 9,099, you see after you're training all the 99% of the things, the machine says the output is zero. And only, only if the training is reached to the last moment, this is there is one happening. So, so you, if you new, use neural net to train this kind of magnets, the machine says, what is any gate? They understand any gate is a dummy device. That is whatever is the input, output is zero uh, because you may not reach the last moment. That's the situation. So this is the difference between machine understanding and human human re inductive reasoning. Okay, there are so, so large gaps our machines at this moment so, uh, based on the neural network system, it's, it doesn't work there. And also let's look at another thing that about uh, the actual intelligence. We say actual intelligence uh, as in our brain have three levels. There are different things. There are properties are totally different. So we, we, current uh, AI technologies believes data determines everything. Or if we obtain enough data, we can, we can obtain higher level of intelligence, even super than human brains. Actually, it, it, there is no hope if we believe in that way. Because the form of the things, are, their property are totally different. And if you look at the unit, you would understand they are different things. For example, they, Data is based on the based on call qualification system. So the, the unit is uh, is just a unit of how uh, how many bits, uh, uh, the, the how many unit uh, uh, of your measurement skill, and information become a bit because the shown already to us. But what is the unit of knowledge? And uh, most of uh, people in here would say, okay, knowledge is still counts by bit, actually it's worth not. And you say the definition of knowledge is says so that's a condition product of information and a concept. We may put this, uh, this uh, space to knowledge. That means if we have a piece of information, we have, we have existing concept or new concept, the combination of them builds our knowledge. So eventually you, you'll see this clearly, this is a relationship. 
So this is my discovery in uh, uh, 2018. We say the basic unit of knowledge actually is a beer, is a binary relation. So it is a, it is a much, much complicated than bits, binary digits. So Shannon told us about information, but actually this is the latest discovery about what is the nature of knowledge. And then intelligence, what is the nature, basic measurement unit based on this uh, definition, that's a condition product between uh, information events and uh, another dimension, it is uh, the functions you already built. So this kind of functions you built is somewhere uh, these layers, okay, that's the functions you built. And uh, the uh, information or stimuli uh, with a condition product of your uh, pre-built functions that becomes behavior, becomes intelligence. Uh, and also interesting is the unit. The uh, intelligence unit of intelligence actually is a big, it's a binary process. That means any process that you build, and uh, if that's a hook to the external information or events, it becomes a piece of intelligence. And you see all the things here tells us the, the entities we are dealing with in the brain have totally different mechanisms, different mathematical models, or their properties are totally different. We can't believe you can jump from data to intelligence without uh, the aggregation level by level, when, uh, 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 eventually you can reach here. So <laughs> there is no way for jumping. And uh, so this is, uh, let me give you a couple of examples. So for example, if you're just doing, uh, the first example is the end gate, we already explained. So here is uh, another example, says, uh, if you're just doing data aggregation based intelligence generation, you would get a number of uh, your, your conclusions that would be that would be confusing. <laughs> would be uh, seems your reasoning process was right, but your, your your conclusion would be would be would be you know that's a humor. Uh, for example, you say based on big data, we observed uh, the the signs raising every morning after the after the singing of the roosters. <laughs> if the roosters were, is wake up and singing, and then you would expect the sun is rising. The data, big data, if you use your neural network training, all the big data, they say, okay, the earth working this way. But actually, of course, we see this is not true because if you re remove all the roosters from the world, the sun will still rising. So that means uh, this relationship the uh, neural network would observe based on big data would not be a causal relation. And they are just a uh, fine assumption. It is appears have a relation, but not necessarily and not uh, uh, sufficient. So that's another, another situation so based on uh, neural network training. And you observe that people get old on the earth or other planet. Uh, because our Earth is uh, rotating clockwise. And then you would suggest, okay, we actually may get younger, younger every day. If we move to another planet uh, that's rotated yeah, anti clockwise And actually, it, it, we haven't proved if this is wrong or not. But actually, the data just tell you in that way. But, uh, you know, we need experiment, we need observations. Perhaps it happens, or perhaps it's not a causal relationship. So all the things say is just based on neural natural training, actually we can not get a reliable knowledge and a reliable and dependable intelligence. So we need, you know, study the mechanism further and understanding the causality between the things. So that leads to uh, the studies uh, uh, studies for uh, studies. Let me, okay, so the uh, second discovery is the actually intelligence is <coughs> is embodied is embodied by causal inferences. It's not just based on data research. Data don't reveal or contain the internal essence of. Uh, Causal, causal relationship. We still have to understand that the upper eye or any kind of intelligence 
is a kind of behavior based on the events, information to behavior to knowledge. They are not directly based on data, but data is the more is the uh, materials or raw materials of information. Okay, so this is all the relation we discussed. Uh, another thing more important is this, our reason is a causal system. So as a causal system, we say our entire any piece of intelligence is a necessary sufficient causality rather than one directional driving. Because this kind of data and the average or maximum tell us something. It is not reliable, it is not causal. So that means uh, in our reasoning system, you need to do two things at the same time for any reasoning. One is to find the changing variables or changing concept events to find the to find the nice uh, sufficient condition. That means something happened based on essential based on something. And then another part should be uh, established as well is called necessary. If something happen, always uh, uh, always trigger something. We need we need the analysis of necessary. And if the necessary condition is not there, it, it is still not a, not a piece of basic understanding about the causality. Just like the, just like the previous uh, uh, examples, you see, we observe something there is a, there is a necessary relationship, but, uh, but uh, one of the re relationships, but they are not sufficient. So that's where the reasoning could be wrong. So the machine intelligence nowadays is still at this level. They get some conclusions, but uh, many of them are not reliable or trustable. And based on that, so we say our future to improve the AI technology and our reasoning power to move the uh, AI series to closer to, to the brain, to human power actually, to improve all the things here, as we say, the, uh, we, we need to uh, imply both causal relationship in uh, machine level reasoning. And also in the future, more important than, than the reasoning is another thing called intelligent generation. That means that by observing all the data and all the learning process, the quantum machine actually, eventually they should be able to generate their own intelligence. Rather than say, okay, they just know data and based on data, what is appearance? This is the current level. We want in the future, the machine, we would uh, enable the machines to generate their own intelligence. Then it becomes a par part of human intelligence because this is a human enabled. At this moment, uh, we, we still didn't reach that aim. That's the ultimate aim of intelligence science, artificial intelligence, and computer science. And, and another one is uh, to generate autonomous generate uh, knowledge systems. The machine should be able to create their knowledge rather than they are waiting for us, for humans to tell them. Okay, so the both of them are, are parallel. You say if the machine have enough intelligent generation power, the sun is they can generate their own knowledge. If they may generate their own knowledge, they have a more powerful learning, learning uh, capability. So this is a sign in the future if the machine can learn knowledge rather than learn from data, okay? So all this should be considered that uh, the future of challenges for reaching the ult ultimate aims in if, uh, intelligent science and machine learning. And uh, so that will lead to something actually so we call the symbiotic and the collective system of intelligence. So in this kind of symbiotic system, there is no difference between machine and human. So the nature, intelligence, and the artificial... Tienen que ponerle que en la computadora. But then? But then? What, what you said? Okay, anyway. Uh, so this is the future. So eventually, if the machine intelligence is getting powerful, there will be no differences between machine and... Uh, human, then the symbiotic part is to integrate coherently into a kind of collective intelligence. 
it, it, there is no differences between machine and human. That's the future. So let's look at uh, how we do this based on understanding about the current constraints of a, uh, how we develop, develop this future, uh, you know, symbiotic and collective intelligence systems between machines and humans. So that's uh, lead to the basic uh, studies of intelligent science and generally, uh, that means what is uh, the generical theory and foundations towards machine in implementation of AI. And so look at, uh, so this is uh, the first is concept of intelligent science actually is talking about theoretical parts and the mathematical means towards the dealing with abstract intelligence, whatever it is from human or from machines, from animals. And we're trying to deal with it as generical theory called abstract intelligence that would be implemented in different ways. And that would be different paradigms. But whatever it is, they share the same foundation or can represent the same way of mathematics. And so then they say, so we are actually our aim is moving the in machine intelligence from bottom up. So we say, we, 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 we spend so many years, we're still here. We have to brew the cap and then reach the autonomous uh, company intelligence. So for each of the levels, I have a uh, detailed descriptions. We have no time to explain the details, but so you see the base structure, the intelligence, is uh, represented by a kind of dispatching function with recursive structures. So that means there are a number of things that depend on external events or stimuli based on different stimuli of the system or the brain or the machine system will dispatch a suitable and proper behavior to deal with it at different levels. And uh, once we reach the top levels, there will be more clever behavior says knowledge generation and uh, learning by themselves and inference or reasoning by themselves and uh, generate inductive series. Once they observe the enough side of things, they say, okay, there is a generical theory. Inductively, they reach, they tell us, okay, there is a rule about the things we are observing there. This is the level the machine really becomes something closer to human capability. And uh, so eventually, so the understanding about the RFI, the basic intelligence series is so the intelligence is actually is a recursive system from the bottom up. That means once we know the layer K minus one, we can build the layer K. And uh, or inversely, we can reduce the higher layers to lower layers by this kind of recursive, recursive system. And eventually each layer, the bottom layer is data. And data is represented if we know the side of the data. And then information will be generated, knowledge may be generated, and then intelligence will be reached. So there's a basic understanding about how the brain works in a rigorous structure. So based on that, so, so we are going to one of discoveries, uh, discoveries is okay. Actually, the ob objects in both uh, uh, intelligence and AI shares uh, uh, that uh, shares something that actually hide already out of our domain of understanding. Or you see, our number system will stop here, uh, real numbers for almost 200 years from Descartes work in France. Yeah, but now we, we, we reached here based on Professor Lofside's uh, discoveries. There are far in num uh, uh, numbers, actually, it's two dimensional structures with, uh, with a value and uh, confidence level. And uh, now we extend this to n levels, n domain, n dimensions like these structures. So we call the hyperstructures. That means not necessarily two dimensions or one dimension. There could be infinity or multi dimensions. We call it, well, this formula we call it a tuple, n tuple. That means uh, there are n individual dimensions with uh, constraints. And uh, you can extend it into a detail structure like uh, many lines in n tuple. So this is uh, what we define H. We say intelligent science and machine learning, all the intelligent 
the system eventually is working in that extended scope, not in pure numbers. That's why only based on data training, you are known as a three generate good machine intelligence. So the, all the things then eventually focus on RFI, is how the machine may generate these kind of things like human. And uh, so then <laughs> for the current domain of our representative power and also for the things we know in nature numbers, real numbers, what should we do? And this is the whole picture says, okay, actually as human, our everyday life is dealing with to be and to do problems. And whatever, it, uh, whatever they are, they are majorly in the to be and the to do demand was or category. Uh, there are small categories to hive that could be sometimes closer to, to be, sometimes closer to, to do. Well, that's an extension of to be, okay. We only deal with tune of these categories of things. So then what is the mathematical model that support us to do this? We say conventionally in our existing methodologies, we use logic to deal with to be. We use functions, calculators to deal with to do. But they are inadequate. They are not enough because the things and the types, they are sometimes too complicated that out of our capability or means. And then this is the latest development in the last decades, the last two decades in my life. Actually, we developed a lot of things called, in the family, we call it intelligent mathematics. So you see, for dealing with to be, we develop something called concept algebra. That means how you build up your basic unit of knowledge. That's called the basic unit is concept. There's semantic algebra. What is the meaning of each of the concept and, and their mathematical operations? Fuzzy logic, everybody knows this, and the big data algebra. This is how the data may manipulate in very large scopes that will generate concept, gener semantic generate knowledge. And uh, there are visual semantic algebra as parallel of the semantic algebra. And as I for the to do part of the major structure in uh, uh, in uh, in uh, intelligent mathematics, we call it the behavior process algebra. That means how human or machine behaviors or process may be modeled and operated as an algebraic system. Just power of this, our machines could generate the future intelligence by their own reasoning system. So this is a thing. This also covers all the software science studies about how computers may generate programs for the AI system. And as our inference algebra, this is more important, uh, you know, to, to do induction and the deduction in a system that help us reasoning in a rigorous way. And also there are fuzzy structures uh, corresponding to this. This is a picture to say what we did for the fundamental part of the intelligent science based on underpinned by the mathematical models. And uh, based on that, so we say we are, we, we actually, that help us to understand, okay, the new problems demand new forms of mathematics because the domain of our target in intelligent science AI had already out of the domain of our real numbers. We have extended it to more complicated hyperstructures and then that we, we can build an algebraic system to deal with that. That becomes more powerful mathematical models. So, so the reason here is highlight here says, okay, we are in AI and the intelligent science. We're dealing so many things that they are no longer a pure number. You say, what is the concept? What is the system? And you can't simply say, I use the nature number to de 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 denote it. And uh, they, each of them are out of our capability or our domain of modeling. So that's why they are hyperstructured as in pure numbers. And uh, then, so this drive us to develop so many uh, whole bunch of algebraic system to manipulate each of them in rigorously. So that becomes a power to deal with all the things we're expecting AI, intelligence, knowledge, and systems, you see a cognitive functions about brain. And this is the picture says what we need 
in a discovery in extended field of AI and brain expert systems. So that leads to the current uh, you know, direction says we're developing autonomous system, AI we call the double AI. So this is the AI should not be data driven or should not be pre-trained. That should be autonomous. That means they work by themselves to generate something for our needs rather than we train them. Uh, because uh, the training based ideas is not a great idea. For example, for the, for the very well best trained neural networks, say from Google, from Microsoft, to recognize human facial information. And if you have a group, a group photo, a family photo, if you feed in the, your photo in the upside down way, and what is the best neural network would understand? They, they will tell you there is no person, no facial information, because they never trained to understand the upside down information. And also we test in our, in our project, we test another situation if you feed in a photo with somebody, their eyes were closed. So that means when you take the shot, uh, somebody was not uh, open their eyes fully. So in that situation, what would happen? And uh, you know, very, the best trend in natural actually, they say, okay, there are some somebody is there in a photo group, group photo, but somebody is not a human, or there is no facial recognition for that, that, that kind of uh, people, because their position is normal, or their eyes are closed. Or you know their partial mask, but some some part of their clothes. So this is actually says our current, you know, data based or training based technology or not a final solution or powerful solution for AI system. We have to enable AI to autonomously figure out the things rather than rather than just based on training. And another situation is why we, we say this is not a generic solution as, so, as our current technology of AI, <laughs> because in many of the real time systems, there is no opportunity to allow you to pre train your system. For example, you are driving, you, you are control airplane, or you are control a missile. You have no time to say, okay, let's retrain my system because situation changed. There is no way to do that. That's why the final destination or ultimate main, ultimate aim of AI actually is autonomy. So we call it AI. So what is AI actually is to brain spirit. So this is the details of our brain models. Is there are seven layers as we explained. The bottom four layers are our human operating system and the top three layers are our apps. And uh, then anything beyond the age is derived, autonomously derived in our everyday life. You don't ask anybody say, can you train me again? Because I have a problem. And actually all the solutions is derived based on all the, all the things that had already built in our group, particularly learning, the autonomous learning system, autonomous problem solving system, autonomous decision making system. So all the, all the things actually uh, so all, all the future autonomy AI is still built this uh, framework, uh, no, no differences. As so all this framework will lead to one of our partial implementation called, auto, auto, called the cognitive robots. So these robots will build in with this kind of human-like well, brain spirit uh, uh, framework to implement the future of next generation of uh, uh, AI technologies. Another discoveries in his studies actually says how much we can learn. And if we are going to train training on a machine, if we are going to build a very advanced knowledge, is how much we can learn, we can memory in our neural system. We so the fundamental mechanisms is well known. Okay, so we say that our knowledge is represented by the synaptic synaptic connections between the new neurons. So we are now to put our knowledge or information in a nuclear of the cell, rather than we use the synaptic connections to represent the knowledge we learned in the brain. The machine should do similar things. 
Currently, the machine use uh, the cells, use their memory cells to store knowledge. It is compared with the power of the uh, uh, knowledge. It, is, uh, it looks a little bit stupid. Okay. So then this is a challenge in neuroscience, or brain science, also computer science is what is human capability of memory? How much we can learn and we can remember? It was a challenge. Actually, there are different ideas, and uh, in most of the times, there is no, no idea. Based on this generic ob observation about synaptic connection, we say the things you can memory becomes a combination. That means, and is the base of how many neurons there are in your, in your brain. That means how many uh, connections uh, in a between a pair of brain you can, you can generate, you can grow. And that becomes your memory space. So, but uh, eventually, once we got these models, we, we tried to solve it, but there was a, a difficulty challenge because the things here are too too large. Because this is uh, n here is hundred billion, <laughs> and uh, uh, n here is hundred billion, and the connection m here in average is a thousand. And then, so no computer can solve the problem like this in a combination. So then eventually we found the uh, algorithm to reduce this uh, huge size of combination into, our, uh, into, our, uh, into uh, the approximate solutions. So eventually we got the results. And uh, this is results of the solution to see how much the ordinary human brain can remember. And this is our representative space in the brain. It is a 10 raised to the power of uh, 8,000, more than 8,000. How much is this? How much is this? This is uh, much, much greater than, than the chips and hard disks of computers. If you collect them all in the world together, there are still a small piece of this. <laughs> That's the situation. So there is a story, you, you, you say, in, 19, uh, in 20, 20, 23, 2003, in Salson, uh, France, we had a conference. Uh, there were two keynote speakers. Uh, one is uh, the chief engineer from IBM France, and the other, other one is me. But somehow my, my talk was in the first day to talk about uh, these findings. And then the second day, the chief engineer of IBM France, and when we meet uh, in, in breakfast, in, a, in breakfast, he told us, I could not, could not sleep. I see what happened. He said, I had to change my slides uh, last night. Uh, I asked why he, he told you present something like that. But uh, actually, he, in his uh, prepared slides he prepared, he would, <laughs> he would claim in the next 10 years, the chief capacity of IBM will be great to the human memory. And uh, once he see this uh, conclusion, he give up, and he would never say any human made chips would greater than this. There is no way to do that. That's why after this, you said uh, no, nowadays uh, twenty years had already passed, and actually nowadays no company would claim would say this kind of policy. They will build a brain, brain like a chips that's greater than uh, than a nature brain. Actually, nobody can do this. So this is the, the power of theory, power of mass, that uh, explains a lot of things. Uh, another discovery is about uh, human learning system. You see, we were focused on very simple learning, pattern recognition. And actually something amazing is the last two. This is my, my theory. It says uh, how the machine would learn knowledge rather than object orientation, uh, object identification patterns. And also another thing more important is intelligent generation. So that's a based on this, what is a machine intelligence? What is a basic uh, function of intelligence? How the machine would generate that? So all these two kind of things, if we can get some breakthroughs, you would expect a very powerful AI machines in the future. But now we still have theoretical, you know, uh, challenges, we have technical challenges as well. But the major thing is a theoretical challenge. We don't understand what is knowledge, what is knowledge generation uh, by computers. We also don't know how the knowledge will become 
behaviors that's intelligent generation. And so we, I would predict in the future, we are going to actually address those two challenges. If we can't break, make any breakthrough there, the AI in the next uh, couple of decades is still the same. And although there are fancy applications, uh, they didn't solve the major problems towards brain inspired functions or what is it? The nature intelligence do there. Okay, so this is a basic understanding. Uh, uh, okay, I will skip some of the things and uh, we say enable machine to learn human knowledge is because that's a need to understand what is knowledge. The knowledge is a function defined here that transforms information data into concept. So this is a single piece of knowledge. And, and then what, it, what is uh, the whole space of knowledge in a human brain or in a future machine? It is a side of concept mapped to another side that becomes our whole knowledge. But uh, this is still not to the end uh, because uh, the entire knowledge becomes a hierarchical structure. That means you, you, you have all this key, it is all the relationship mapping between all the concepts. But uh, there are layers. Some layers concept will generate a higher layer. Uh, this layer will generate another layer. They're embedded together, you see. This is the bottom layer you have in video concept. This is another layer you would have group of concepts. This is a discipline of concept. This is a whole knowledge in a person or in a computer's memory space. So this is our represent, uh, mathematical model of knowledge. If it is uh, also with knowledge, the base unit is a beer. It is all these kind of relations. And then you see this is a simulation our machines within seconds can build up our ontology or basic knowledge. This is the first 600 concept in English. Most frequently use the words concept in English. And if we ask human do this, because all the links are quantitative, the machine analysis, what is the level of their relations? And if human do this just for 600 simple English words, they can't build a knowledge uh, uh, network like this because they, they would need several years. Or if you hear a group of uh, researchers, you, you still need, uh, say, several months uh, to deal with just uh, 600 uh, generic uh, English terms. But the machine can generate it just within two seconds. So that means uh, this is machine power. Eventually, they, they understand the human knowledge or human, the basic unit of human knowledge is all the concept very accurately than human ourselves, even than the designer of all the dictionaries, the experts of linguistics for their, you know, this is our simulation. Uh, that's the things that we already reached by machine learning for knowledge, not only machine learning for image recognition, that kind of simple things. And uh, so that leads to the implementation for the future of, uh, of uh, ro robotics. Uh, okay, I think this is already the time. And uh, uh, so before the uh, end, end it says, so, so this is to say, once we are doing basic research and mathematical oriented uh, basic studies, actually that lead you to a better understanding about truth, about the essence of the field of our, our doing. So then you see, this is my input in, uh, this Google Scholar recognized in cognitive problems are number one in the world based on publication index. In software science, I'm, I'm number one. And I'm number two in cognitive computing and number eight in autonomous systems, okay. And so that's not a coincidence. And based on research gate, and uh, they rec rec recognize me in general as in general as number one percent. That means, uh, and uh, in, the, in specific uh, disciplines here, and I was number one recognized. So this is not a, a coincidence. It is based on all basic uh, research, and also uh, there's a transdisciplinary research. So you, this is my current uh, record, you see. 
approved, formally approved the GoBar Go conjecture, you know this. And that's had already published in uh, Weiser Transactions of Mass. And also uh, last, uh, uh, last uh, two weeks ago, I uh, was in Essen in Greek to report uh, both of the results that had already been published. And it is a key, two keynotes in a mass conference, European mass conference, talking about both of my proof of Gubach uh, twin prime conjectures. So you see, this is not easy because uh, the Gubach is uh, 180 years problem. And uh, the other one is 170 years or something like that. But now we got the formal uh, proof. And also that's not a very difficult, uh, uh, very not a very complicated one because all the simulations there are based on the mathematical proof there. And there are different ways to prove the same things. And uh, actually that leads me to enable me to, to prove something more in the future. Because you see, the trans discipline studies and the fundamental research actually extend your power, mental power to deal with more complicated things. Well, in other words, those kind of things uh, People in pew, pew mice would have found that it is so hard, but uh, but now this for me I don't feel that those kind of things are that hard, because uh, in artificial intelligence, in all the intelligent uh, you know intelligent generation and uh, brain space system, their difficulty and challenge are more hard than this kind of pew mice problems. That's my feeling. And uh, we are going to, uh, you know, organize uh, the 21st uh, HRV conference, uh, Cognitive Informatics, Cognitive Computing. So uh, it is planned uh, in, in December, in the middle of December. So the deadline, uh, there are still a few, a few weeks of deadline. If uh, our audience here is exactly the sim similar series of conference, and uh, if you like, you would have uh, you would submit your papers there, okay? Uh, so we hope to see you, some of you there as well. Okay, so any questions, please? So, do you have any questions? Does someone have a question? Okay, please. I have a question. Okay. Hello, Professor. Um, I, I was wondering that maybe these uh, intelligent machines of the future, they you have in some sense to rediscover mathematics in the sense that these machines you have to learn how to count, they you learn how to represent numbers, they you, they you need to create all, all, all the history of mathematics that we, you, we humans uh, had to discover that this system might have to discover by themselves. What is your opinion about, about that conjecture? Uh, yes, uh, I, I would say you're right. Actually, we are doing AI, but uh, we, most of us treat uh, AI as uh, empirical or technical study. Actually, it is not enough because all the rules, all the causality we understand as our basic knowledge is uh, actually is represented in mathematics. Without the math, you know, all the other things we reach so far cannot be rigorously described. And then we can do rigorous reasoning. The machine is the same. If they don't understand your things in, in a mathematical system, they can deal with it. Uh, but uh, somehow in AI, this emerging field, we have no uh, you know, mature or ready mathematics because even all the things we're dealing with out of our domain of representation rather than say reasoning. Now, that's the bottleneck and that's the constraints or challenges here. If we can't solve this kind of problem, so, and in the next 20, 50 years, we're still, uh, still the same our technology. Because, so this is reasoning about how the science was developed. It's not necessary for AI. And uh, so that, that, that's the, I believe that's the only way to advance our field. If we don't focus on our mathematical means or our theoretical foundations, we really can't solve all the challenges. 
And that, that's the fundamental understanding. And there is no exception. Any disciplinary field developed in this way. Initially, there are some technical problems. And then you generally find it's a theoretical problem. And then we found underneath is a mathematical problem without a, a powerful math. And actually, we can't deal with that kind of things. For example, we, if we never understand what is the mathematical model of intelligence, how you claim you can develop good intelligence system, uh, you, you know, the causality is, there is no link in that kind of causality. So, so this is why we see brain species. Eventually, this is how you formally model the brain, and model the behaviors, model the intelligence knowledge in the brain, and then the machine will be able to implant, implement it once the theory is ready, once the mathematical means are mature. That, that, that's my perspective. That's the basic things. And uh, we, we can't just say, okay, everybody, thousand people training neural networks. And what we reach is uh, the best the advanced branch in, in our area is image recognition. Even for that, we, we, we still have no theory. Okay, we're just training different kinds of neural networks. And uh, you, you know, the direction is not that uh, smart. And that's why thousands of our PhD students enter this field and repeatedly doing different training neural network, trained neural networks. It is worries me actually. Actually, we didn't have very important breakthroughs in this field. And of course, uh, for the people from outside, from industry, they would say, okay, that's fancy and now it is everything may be treated by AI system, but actually, we still we still constrained by theory and mathematical means. That's my understanding. Well, from my perspective, I think in a way. Okay, thank you. Another question. We we'll have another question. Okay. No more question. Okay. okay. Thank you so much, Professor Wang, for your talk. Thank you. Have a good day.